everybody calls Han Solo a bitch. Bring him on. I prefer a straight fight to all this sneaking around. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Oh, come on, bro. It's the wars. It looks like we have the broadest range of Star Wars news topics we've had in weeks. Rogue Squadron, Visions, and Detours. Oh, my. This is the Wars and More. I'm Joe. And, of course, with me is my good buddy, Doug. Hey, Doug, how you doing this week? Doing pretty good, Joe. How you doing? Not bad, not bad. It's <laughs> quite the variety there, huh? Quite the variety. We haven't had that in a minute. It's true. It's true. We 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 typically get one one thing a week, maybe two. Right. And we get to still throw the bad batch in there, so Yeah, that's a good thing. We get to we get to actually bounce around this week and look at more than laser focused kind of things. Right. And this is the first week in a minute that it's not uh, Andor or Kenobi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we yeah, it's been pretty focused on on the production of <laughs> those shows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, first up, I want to talk visions. Right. This is ah uh, yes. This is new. It's different. This is something we've never seen in Star Wars. Uh, the closest thing we get to this style of animation would be Resistance. Yes. Um, Resistance took a little bit of a play on this uh, anime style. And yeah, it really yeah. only came through, in my opinion, when you got the starships and stuff like that. That's when it really took on that style of animation. Agreed. That's when it would really shine, for sure. Yeah. yeah it definitely shine. Like, it reminded me of Robotech. I keep saying that. But, right. But it really did pick up then. But Visions... I mean, going all out. Yeah. Like, like big time. Um, so just, just so everyone knows what we're talking about, they had the, uh, anime expo panel for star Wars visions. Okay. And they had a special look. Um, if you haven't seen it, you can head on over to YouTube, check it out. It's interesting. It's interesting. That's for sure. How do you feel about it? Well, like- I, <laughs> as I as I was watching this this special look that we got, it was what about three minutes long. You know, some interviews with some of the you know creatives and 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 getting a a feel for what we're going to be seeing. Um, I. I don't know where this is going to fit into, you know, the, the, the call it what I'm thinking, right? The canon. Okay. Um, but the impression that I get, and uh, because it's clear that all of these people they were interviewing had, you know, they're storytellers, right? Mm-hmm. And they're very good storytellers everybody's got their own angle on stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And that's actually, you know, that's coming out in just these interviews. So kind of the, the way I'm, I, the impression I'm getting right off the bat is that this is kind of like, uh, this may be a story being told in a galaxy far, far away. Second hand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that's kind of how I'm approaching this as of now. And that's my impression from this for, you know, special look that we got. Uh, it looks cool. I mean, the animation style remind me of, of, you know, <laughs> I'm old school, right? Voltron, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Thundercats, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, but even more so, right? Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's going to be cool. I'm just not expecting it to... Um, I don't know. I, I'm not expecting it to have... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, 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 a pillar in... The Star Wars canon. I'm not expecting it to be a pillar in the Star Wars canon. You know what I'm saying? 
Well, I, I think this is going to be the the really the first property where they're going to be challenged with their vow of everything going forward is canon. Right. Um, because they, they do say in there, right, that we wanted to give these creators a wide creative berth to explore the Star Wars galaxy. Yes. So, like, they, they gave them the keys to the car, right? Like. Yeah. Um, Those guys are doing donuts out in the cornfield. Just saying. <laughs> and they said they, they put, and they said they wanted this to be as authentic as possible to the studios and the creators. So they did. They didn't say as authentic as possible to Star Wars. No, they wanted it to be authentic as possible to those studios. Right. Which is fine. I respect that. Um, because this is going to give us a different look, right? This is going to give us something we've never seen with Star Wars before. Exactly. Always open to that. Um, but I, I'm with you. I don't know where this is going to fall in the, in the category of Canon. We'll see. We'll see. It could be, we could watch this and go, Oh, this has to be Canon. Maybe, you know, we don't know. I, I, I gotta tell you, I was, you know, when I talk about Voltron and stuff, I, as, as a kid, I was into it, <laughs> you know? Uh, oh, yeah. but, uh, yeah, I, I, for as much as I was into that, it's like Star Wars trumped everything, right? So I'm just hoping that, you know, if this is going to be the kind of thing where they're like, well, yeah, that's canon or whatever, I, I would just like them to like, in my mind, it would be awesome. Well, I mean, if, if they, if they s- told these stories from the point of view of it being, this is a story passed down so it gets diluted and exaggerated in these ways, right? That's the sort of thing I would, if I heard that, like if that was a precursor to each episode or something like that, I'm all in. Well, I mean, this is just the kind of thing where you could just say like, you know, these are, you know, legends that are told around the campfire, you know, like, Things like that. Like, Perfect. Because first off, anime and its style plays to that really well. Yes. Plays to telling the story of a legend yes. very well. They do it all the time in their stories. Yes. Um, and in fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see them do it just naturally because they do that a lot. Yes. With with uh, anime stories. Um, I got to say, like, one thing that took me aback and I hated I hate the fact that I got to say this because I've been so critical of this character uh, over the past few months. And it, it's, it's even come down as far as to say that I hate this character. I don't. But, man, that Boba Fett <laughs> still that flashed by, how badass did that look? Oh, yeah. And that's one argument you've never heard me make. Like, You'll never hear me make the argument, oh, Boba Fett doesn't look badass. Right. No, he always looks cool. Yes, that's for sure. And and that shot looked very cool. And that, that shot alone got me pretty excited. Yeah. Um, I, I... And I even like the kind of... Um, they mentioned that they gave everything like a Japanese flair. Right. With so you see like the the wrapped hilts on the lightsabers and things like that. I'm like that's kind of cool. Yeah, I got to be honest. What that really reminded me of, I, uh, it's a different uh, lightsaber profile and everything, but it reminded me of Ray's lightsaber. To be honest, yeah, a little bit. Kind of had that look to it, you know. Um, but it's also <laughs> it's also got that kind of katana look to it, right? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, which well, I mean, know. this is a, a natural thing to like. You think about George's influences with like Kurosawa and stuff like that. Sure, and and that whole samurai kind of feel. This, this makes sense. Well, yeah. I, I, now, <laughs> because that is such a well-known thing, right? The whole Kurosawa influence and everything. Right. I'm just hoping that they're not doing this to try and. Uh, you know, highlight that, right? 
highlight George's Kurosawa influence. No, I think this is, in all honesty, I don't think this is a, a, a happening because of George's Kurosawa influence as much as it is a happening because of Dave Filoni's move with resistance to go to this because of his samurai influence. Oh, it's his Godzilla influence. Yeah, I mean, all that's like <laughs> I'm joking. Godzilla. But Dave's Dave's the one that started this ball rolling, and 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 the 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 reception of the animation style for Resistance is the reason this is happening because it was a good looking show. Oh yeah. So, I think that's what got Visions going. They saw anime anime style Star Wars, said, hey, I wonder if we went all in on anime, how would that be received? Because even though they did an anime style with resistance, they still kept it grounded to American style animation a little bit. Sure. I, I, Whereas this, they're going all out. I think when they, you know, if you, you, you say they, they ask how, how would that be received, I think then they focus grouped it. And, uh, you know, did, uh, uh, cost studies and this and that, and, you know, then decided, okay, yeah, we'll go forward with this, but <laughs> it's kind of how the business of it, I'm sure works, but, uh, yeah, it, it looks cool. I'll say that I'm just, you know, uh, they said way back when that, Here's the, here's the line. We're cutting it off. So everything moving forward is canon. Okay. How's this canon? I mean, I, I, I'm the just, problem with that declaration that they made. Is yes. That creates this conversation now for us fans, right? Exactly. Exactly. Like we have to have, is this a canon or not canon discussion? Right. I mean, everyone can say what they want about how they feel about what is now called Legends material, the old expanded universe. This is not a conversation we ever had back then. Is it canon? Is it not? Right. It was just a Star Wars story. Yep. Um, canon to us always what was what George Lucas put out. That was guaranteed canon. Absolutely. There was stuff we wanted to be canon. And we had to wait around and see if it ever became. Oh, man, I know this is going. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> but uh, you're right. Moraban pisses me that's off. That's right. But <laughs> that's what I, was I totally thinking wasn't going there. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, you know what? We can go there. <laughs> a little bit later when we talk about another thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, but, um, th they created this box, right? Yes. And I don't know if it was such a good decision to, to draw that line in the sand. That Ag this agreed. Is everything from here on out is canon. Right. Because you watch this and you're like, I don't know if this is going to be canon. I feel like they're going to backpedal on this. That, it, it's so fantastic looking when i say fantastic i mean fantasy fantastic i'm already questioning you know how does it fit in you know because star wars has a certain look and feel to it you know and this is a little bit of a departure from that so if this is some like i said obscure handed down from generation to generation story then I get it. It makes sense to me. Oh, then the fantastic makes nothing but sense. Exactly. Because, you know, it's all the phone game, right? Yeah, exactly. And that, I can swallow no problem. But oh yeah, when you come out with your declaration like they did when they, you know, when they purchased the IP, I, it, it's, it's only because they said it that I'm questioning it now, you know? So. Yeah, that was... That was a decision when they said that. Even back then, I was like, Ooh, "This is right. This is not a good call to say this." Setting yourself up here. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, George let everyone play in the sandbox, 
Yeah. And then when he, he decided, drew the line and said, like, hey, what I make is canon, period. Exactly. And he, when he decided to use something that somebody else came up with or a character, it was fair game. And yep. when he decided, nope, we're not calling it that. We're calling it this. Okay. Ugh. Yep. It's just how it was. So, I don't know. Overall. The only thing that bothers, you know what? We're going to go down that road just a tad. Okay. The only thing that bothers me about that is, you know, like the, the Moraban Korriban thing. Yeah. Is Korriban was used in stuff that was made and endorsed by Lucas Arts. His company. Right. So like that, that was like a being used by his company was almost like a confirmation of Canon, right? Like, uh, yeah, I know what you're saying, but yeah, I digress. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, other than that, it looks great. Looks great. Looks interesting. They definitely, uh, they definitely did their work on the, um, promotion standpoint is, even if we're questioning the whole canon of it and things like that, we're still going to watch because you just, how can you watch that trailer and go, yeah, I'm not going to watch that. Oh, I know. I mean, you got you look at that. You're like, I got to check this out. This, this is, looks... this is star Wars content. Number one, right? Right. Number two, it's very interesting looking star Wars content. If they painted themselves into a corner, hmm, we'll deal with that when we get there. And maybe they got a better answer for it than that. But, uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, for sure it looks good. Well, on the plus side, though, we don't have to wait all that long to see it. Oh, do tell. Because it's coming to Disney Plus on September 22nd. Oh, my. So, right about the time, uh, maybe. There might be a little bit of a gap. A little bit of a gap, but. It'll be shortly after the end of the Bad Batch. This is good things. Yes. Yes. So we're not going to have such a lull in Star Wars content. I don't know how long this series is going to go. Huh. Don't know if they're doing it weekly or if they're just releasing all of it or right or what. There's no real, um, no real information on that because it's only one. What? Well, if they one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If they hold true to their release schedules they've done so far on Disney Plus, it'll probably be one a week. I mean, that's what they've right. done so far. At least with all the new material. Well, hold on, hold on. So I'm I'm looking at this here. It says the anthology will be available on Disney Plus when it premieres on September twenty second. Does that mean all of them? I don't know. This is such double speak in this statement right here <laughs> because it says the anthology will be available on Disney Plus when it, here's the other word, premieres. Right. Like premiere like the first episode or premiere like that's just the day it's all going to get put on there. My guess is going to be that's the first episode. I got a feeling, I got a feeling they'll hold true to how they've been releasing things thus far. That's just a guess though. But at the same time, this is, it says animated short films. So I don't know. Short films as in what, how long are these? I don't know. If they're only nine minutes, I, they're probably just going to put out the whole thing, right? Well, they might. Let's hope they're more than nine minutes. <laughs> I mean, you know, seriously, I would like to, I'd like it to be like a, uh, at least like what would fit in a half hour time slot on TV kind of thing. 22 right, minutes so or whatever. 22 minutes or so. Yeah, at least. That'd be great. Hmm. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. See if they give it any more clarification. But. All right. Well, we covered the new. Yes. Y'all remember detours? <laughs> I think so. Hell, we just talked about this, right? It was uh, it was going to be the May the Fourth surprise. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's that's what everybody was saying, and I think I called bullshit right there. And yeah, well, I had my fingers crossed. Yeah, huh? 
I had my fingers crossed, but I mean, I was hoping for it, but right, I wasn't going to hold my breath. So, detour. Seth Green. Who was he talking with here? Uh, he was talking with EW. Yeah, Entertainment Weekly. So, talking with EW, he says that Lucasfilm is not interested. Not interested. Interesting. Yeah, very Wasn't interesting. It Lucasfilm that made this thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, well, we 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 all remember the stories, right? When yeah, when the acquisition was made, detours was just not. It wasn't the right time, you know. Parody's not the best thing right now because we're doing new movies. We don't want to introduce fans coming in to just parody. Right. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And then they did Lego, which is parody, and they kept doing Lego, which is parody, and Detours is just sat on a shelf. I think we are heading down uh, <laughs> a path here. Uh, I think we're going to be in agreement on this. Um, I do believe, and so I'm just cutting right to it, I think this is the wrong type of parody. Explain. Well... It's Seth Green parody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, for anyone who's seen robot chicken and, and, and things of that, I, I, I think, uh, it's, I mean, you are in the corporate umbrella of Disney. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so if you look at those two things, right, Disney, a la Snow White and stuff and robot chicken. <laughs> okay yeah you get where i'm coming yeah, from now? that way okay yeah so uh i just have a feeling that some of the uh some of the comedy some of the the humor involved in here it probably doesn't fit what disney wants to put out there you know it, it it's probably stuff that made george lucas laugh his ass off but you know Bob Ocker's probably going, ah, yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> that's that's my guess. I mean, these are turbulent times, too, for comedy, right? Like, Oh, absolutely. I mean. And that's part of what we're talking about, I think. Yeah, I mean, everything's a reach now, right? Yes. You know, every time you do something, it's got to have an ist or an ism <laughs> attached to it because that's just. 2021 right right so this stuff was made 10 years ago probably doesn't fit the modern times exactly exactly that that i would i would agree with wholeheartedly uh and i think all this stuff like even with robot chicken you watch robot chicken and all that stuff was like ingest and light and things like that and none of it none of it looking back on it could you say like it was disparaging to a certain group or anything like that right um, but if you wanted to reach, you absolutely could. Sure. And I think the, um, the mindset of studios right now is they don't want to even give people the ability to reach. Exactly. Yeah. Because if things get slow with, you know, taking down other people for stuff, they're going to come on you because yeah, we're bored. Right. We got to attack. So just, just to kind of highlight how we're getting to where we're at talking about this. Uh, uh, let's see. They, they ask, um, he, 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 Seth Green, <laughs> he says, I like to think that we did the assignment well. It's just whether or not the assignment jives with the current intent. Right, right. I can only, you know, I think we, I think we pretty much laid down how we're feeling about that. It's, it's that, you know, it's just not the type of product that Disney is going to want to put out there under their banner. I mean, 
Right. And yeah. just to expand on that, that note, that note you just made yeah. earlier in the interview, he said, but we finished them almost 10 years ago. And so there would have to be a bit of reconfiguring of the existing stuff to make it something that Disney plus would release as a Lucasfilm offering. Right. So, so he understands that some of what they did 10 years ago is not going to fly in today's environment. Right. At least coming from Disney. So I, I, I understand this. I don't necessarily like it, but I understand it. I, it, you know, I'm the type of person, you know, you put out there whatever you want and you know, people are going to like it or they're not. And, uh, you know, it, we should all be cool with it either way, but you know, uh, I just have a feeling that's probably more where it's coming from. I mean, speak with your dollars, right? Like, absolutely. That's absolutely you know, the way to go. Yeah. If you like a product, you pay for it. Yep. If you don't, don't pay for it. Right. Like just, and let that be it. Exactly. I mean, unless something's like blatantly that bad, let it go. Yeah. Don't reach for different, like, oh, well, they might have meant this. Come on. They might have. Right. Did they or didn't they? <laughs> so, yeah. Either way, being what I can see there, this is probably never going to happen. I am firmly in that camp now as well. I, I have to say... You know, after hearing Seth Green put it that way, I got a feeling this is going to be on the shelf indefinitely. <laughs> I do say I do like his approach. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he says, I don't really have an emotional position because I got to spend four straight years making something with George Lucas. <laughs> right. So whether it comes out or it doesn't, doesn't really affect him because he, he got the experience of doing it. He's seen the final product. Everyone who's worked on it has seen it. And that's really all they care about. It was a priceless, priceless experience to them with one of their heroes. Right. Now he does say that he would rather see it be released, but yeah, you know, yeah. But at the same time, he's not going to let it drag him down because it was a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Yep. Totally understand. So rip detours. Yes. All right. Rogue squadron. Rogue squadron. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot. Not a lot. No, it's not no. like we're not like we're seeing a trailer or nothing. Don't oh, get no. excited. I <laughs> know. No, no, no. No, what we, uh, what we did get was, uh, uh, Patty Jenkins speaking with, uh, uh, was AP? It? AP, yes. The entertainment arm of the AP. So, um, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I chopped this into three bits here. It's pretty much the whole thing, you know, but, uh, it's. I just noticed three points here, so I guess we'll just play them all and we can, we can discuss. But uh, uh, she basically talks about what it is she's working on right now here. I am in love with all three projects on my plate right now. I'm definitely doing Rogue Squadron next, and I'm excited to do Wonder Woman 3. And so, you know, these are all, and Cleopatra is coming along great as well. And so we'll see how it works out. But, um, you know, I may just never stop. I may just make movies back to back if they would let me. I I would love it. So, Wonder Woman three. Yeah, it seems like an announcement right there. Really. I don't know. Yeah, it's the first I've heard of it. Here's the hoping that the odd ones are the great ones. So, right. And <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I haven't seen the second one, yet, so I can't even comment. I have. And that's Taking all I have to say about it. Uh, that's all I have to say about it. I, you know, I've seen okay. it more than once, so I'll say that. But uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's. I'll say this. I mean, the first movie was so fantastic. Yes. 
it's it's hard to follow that up, right? It is true. It gets tough when you when you when you nail it the first time around. It's hard to hard to follow up. Yeah. You know, everybody's going to be super critical coming for the next one. <laughs> um, I mean, we've seen that in Star Wars, right? Yes. Um, I didn't know she was making a Cleopatra movie. Yeah, I I didn't either. Uh, that sounds interesting. You know, yeah. Uh, the 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 history buff in me was like, ooh, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's interesting. <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there. Exactly. So, but yeah, main point: Rogue Squadron. Right. Next on the next on the plate. Next, right. So. Uh, here's the angle she's coming at it from. I'm looking to honor all of those things. I think the Michael Stackpole books and the and the video game and all of the Rogue Squadron books. I think they all have a, there's a there's an incredible history that it's really important to honor. And yet it must be brought to a new age because we have to tell a new story with it. And so you're kind of you're trying to blend the best of everything and make it the great fighter pilot movie, which I've always wanted to make as well. And so, um, yeah, you're just, it's a, it's a, it's a big brew <laughs> of things that you're trying to put together and still keep a very simple story. I like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I like that. She's, she's acknowledging that there is a history in, in rogue squadron in star Wars. And, and, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, it needs to be adhered to, uh, 100% because all that's legends material now, but you know, she knows that it's there. There's a, a, a feel to it already. Right. right. You got to kind of like take that into account and, you know, she's looking to take rogue squadron into the future. So, well, I mean, that's, that was what they had said, right? Like this was going to be a new, a new group yep. into Rogue Squadron, which I, I assume this is going to be a squadron that's not going to go away. I it's, would imagine. Yeah, I'd imagine. <laughs> you know, like, like you think of here in the U.S., you know, we've got legendary, you know, military units, right? We've got right. The 101st. Yes, yes, yes. You know, um. So those things just don't go away. Like World War II ended, 101st is still around yes. to this day. Yes. So these things stick around. There's a history and there's a pride that goes along with being a member of the elite group. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I'm kind of hoping it's not going to be Star Wars Top Gun. But. Well. I will say there's a little piece of me that feels like this might be a uh, top gun in space, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I, uh, is that what you want? Like, is uh, it-, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, if this was going to be the type of thing where we, where we are introduced to this new group of pilots and we follow them into you know, their future. I wouldn't be opposed to starting out that way, but I mean, but could you do that without rogue squadron notables? Right. Like, no, I, I, I like without a Luke Skywalker, without a wedge Antilles well, wedge has got to be there no matter what, in my opinion, somehow, some way. Well, if you do, it will definitely, if you do star Wars, top gun, I mean, you have to have Wedge. And even if you don't, I feel like he's the guy you got to bring in, you know, to kind of like, yes, you're going to have these young hotshot pilots, but he's going to be the one to be able to say, look, here's how you perform this maneuver. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And, Mm -hmm. and, and this gets it done every time kind of thing. You know, I, I know all that's cliche and all, but it, it just cements it into the place that it needs to occupy for me, you know? And then that raises my next question. Yeah. 
What do you get to compose this? Because, I mean, you're going to need a Star Wars danger zone if you're going to pull this off. <laughs> you know what? I uh, <laughs> I have a feeling a movie like this could have a lot more of that in it. But I don't know. I, I mean, this this would be the sort of thing, and I don't know how much crossover we're going to ever get, but I could see uh, Kevin Kiner, Ludwig Gorenson, yeah. either one of them doing that. You know, but there could be somebody new, you know, we are going to be entering a time where, uh, there's going to be new names and faces composing Star Wars music. Yeah. That's something we're all going to have to get used to. Yeah. I just, I'm like thinking like, oh man, who could take John Williams influenced Star Wars music music? And twist it to be like Top Gun music. Kenny Loggins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? You, you mentioned the song earlier. Just yeah, I get that, but. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, it was definitely a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All mean, right. Kevin Kiner would definitely be my pick. Okay? Yeah, for sure. Or uh, or the um, guy that's uh, doing uh, Mandalorian. What is his name? Uh, Ludwig. Gorenson, yeah. Gorenson, yeah. I could see him pulling that off. Yep. Other than that, I don't know. Well, this is the sort of thing, you know. I'm sure there's going to be people introduced in that uh, realm that we're going to be like, wow, never would have thought of that. So glad they did. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Cool, we'll see. Um, hmm. <laughs> All right. So she did have one other point that uh, I thought was interesting. And, uh, you know, glad she was looking at it from this, this, this angle. So. It can't be about you, but you have to be the person responsible for bringing the best of you to telling a great story. That's what it is. I've had that conversation with some other people who have had great times in the Star Wars universe and really succeeded. And I think as long as you kind of keep that in mind, it really helps. So I love that. Uh, You know, understanding that, you know, Star Wars can't be about you that's that's <laughs> it's it's something much larger right if if there's anybody who can say star wars is about me it's george lucas and you know i think that ship sailed a long time ago so uh anybody making star wars now understands that they're going to be uh, a, a piece maybe an integral piece but a piece in a much larger puzzle puzzle you know so it's awesome to hear acknowledge that and understand it you know yeah i mean obviously you want to take and leave a piece of you absolutely but yes it's it's definitely it's definitely much bigger than just a single individual um, you know, you, you've heard that saying, right? Star Wars is for everyone. Absolutely. It is it's because there's, there's a little bit of something for everyone. So yep. a single minded approach is probably not going to work out the best. Yeah. But yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting that, uh, she's looking at it that way. She's taking in all the source material, right? And uh, it's now her focus for the immediate future. Yeah, that was nice to hear. She said, that's next. That's awesome. You know, and and what's fun about that is, you know, her father was a fighter pilot. So she's looking to really capture that. Right. That, That should be fun. That would be her 
her piece, right, that she's going to input there, that, that her passion for um, the fighter pilot aspect of it, which if you're doing Rogue Squadron, that's what's important here. Exactly. We don't want to see all the stuff in the barracks uh, and I, nothing but. <laughs> yeah, I see where you're coming from. You got to have something to set up the action, though. You do. You do. You got to have, you got it, but that's where that, you know, you got to have at least one hot shot in there, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. But, and and that's the stuff for the barracks. But other than that, we want to see some kick ass fighter pilot action. Yes. Fast pace. You know, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> I mean, this is this is probably of the of the movie projects coming up. It's probably my I'm most excited for this. Granted, we don't know what the hell Tyke is working on, right? And Ryan Johnson, I mean, it's happening. It's not happening. It's whatever. Exactly. Um, so, movie projects. This is definitely on my top. Yes. Hey, don't forget about Kevin Feige's. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I forgot about that. Marvel Universe and Star Wars Universe. Yeah, I forgot. We're having the. <laughs> yeah. Even even he said crossovers were dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, excited for this one. Definitely. Have something to add to the conversation? Or you just want to let us know how we're doing? Email us, show at thewarsandmore.com. That's the best place to get in on the action. But if social media is a little more to your liking, at the Wars and More on Twitter is always a good place to interact with us. And we're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash thewarsandmore. And of course, your portal to this and everything else, the Wars and More, is thewarsandmore.com. All right, the Bad Batch. It's that time. It is well, that time. Well, almost. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Ming Na Wen. Yes, we are going to get into the Bad Batch. But yes, Ming Na Wen. She was on This Week in Star Wars. And she had an interesting thing or two to say about uh, her character being in the Bad Batch. So before we get too deep into that, let's... uh. Listen to what she had to say about Fennec Shand. When I was able to take a live action character that I've already created and I know how she moves and how she feels, it really helps to make the voice acting so much easier. The only changes that we did was figuring out who a young Fennec would be and her abilities to manipulate or be more cunning and yet more raw, less experienced but more ambitious, willing to take more risks. I think those were some of the energy that we infused in her. So, well... Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, this is, this is, <laughs> uh, I guess we can say one of the rare times, I guess, because the actor playing the character in live action gets to voice the character in animation. So she's definitely got a unique perspective on, on, you know, what to do with voicing that character and uh it's kind of cool i don't know i thought it was kind of a neat thing because uh you know there are certain characters will just say that uh you know some people think should have gone that route but haven't (laughs) right well i mean at the same time though if you take live action actors Mm mm-hmm and put them into the voice acting realm, sometimes that doesn't always work out. Whereas Ming-Na Wen has a, a strong history in voice acting. Sure. So she's done a lot of this in the past. So to go from live action to voice acting for her was not a huge transition. She's done both. Right. And done both a lot. Right. Now we have had like, you know, Katie Sackhoff's gone the other way, right? Right. So, uh, and and then we've had, you know, situations where, like Ahsoka, two completely different actors altogether. So, 
Right. I just, I, I don't know. That kind of thing right there for me was kind of like uh, uh, acknowledging that this character you played in live action, you have a better understanding going in to this voice acting role with that character because you already played that character. You know, it's, I don't know. It just made sense to me, you know? And I think I see what I see where you're going now. Like (laughs) this is a little Ahsoka animosity. Well, a a little bit, a little bit. I'm not going to lie, but it's, it's which, which I understand what your point is here because there is no one, no one with the exception of Dave Filoni or George Lucas that knows the character of Ahsoka Tano better than Ashley Eckstein. Right. So I, I see where you're going there. Uh, okay. It took me a second, <laughs> but now I'm picking up what you're laying down here. Like, right. Right. And, and for as new as Fennec Shand is to all of us, I would have to say the same holds true for Ming-Na Wen. She knows that character better than anybody else. Right. So, you know, it's it, it just makes sense and but I would say the hang up here is 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 just Ashley's experience in live action was a lot less. Sure. Um, you know, she did some I think they were Disney shows, right? Yes. Um, but that was it. That was pretty much it. Right. So and majority of her career was voice acting and, and let's be real. We don't even know the whole story there. There may have just been conflicts that didn't work out. It's possible. And, and I mean, she's busy with her thing, with her universe. Exactly. And I'm not looking to take anything away from what Rosario Dawson's done because I think it was fabulous. Oh, it was fabulous. Now, and I, and to be honest, I'm really not looking to take this down that road too far because, you know, I, I think it was just uh, an interesting take on, you know, what she said. She 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 knew the character already, and the only thing they had to worry about doing was acknowledging this is a younger Finnick and a little rougher around the edges, you know, not as experienced. Mm-hmm. And just play the character from that angle. So, uh, it was just a little insight into the mind of the voice actor <laughs> at that point, you know, and I just thought it was kind of cool. Yep. Right on. All right. So now we'll not tease it this time. The bad batch, the bad batch episode nine bounty lost. Right. So back to Cad Bane. Yeah. Uh, man. <laughs> man. Oh, man. Seeing Cad Bane in action again. Yeah. In, like full it, on action. I was going to say, and this was more action than I think we've ever really seen him in. I mean, right. like, it's like big time action. So. And I mean, let's, let's be real. We see what they're doing here. They wanted to build up Fennec Shand. Oh yeah. Um, you know, this is a guy who had the tenacity to attack the Jedi temple, (laughs) right? (laughs) To steal a holocron, you know, to attempt to kidnap the chancellor, right? You know, this, this is not a guy to fool around with. So to put a young Fennec Shand up against him and have her hold her own. I was just going to say that. Yeah. And she held her own. That's the the key right there. Yeah. That's, you know, in the end, I mean, did she really win? Did he really lose? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think we're there yet, to be honest. No, I think this is not over. Right. At least I hope it's not over. Because that was some of the best 
bounty hunter versus bounty hunter action we've ever seen. Right. Like you, you want to know the skills of bounty hunters in Star Wars? This was showcasing it. Absolutely. You know, typically they end up against their bounty, which is not typically that talented or skilled or whatever. But to see one against the other, ooh, yeah, it's a good fight. <laughs> What's interesting about it is, uh, you know, we find out that each are hired by uh, a different Kaminoan, right? Mm-hmm. Nalase and Lama Su. So, it, it, it's it's they're they're basically fighting through proxy. You know what I'm saying? And that's mm-hmm. that's where I think we're. We're heading here with, you know, the overarching plot of this show is that's going to come out here eventually. <laughs> I don't know if you follow me, but it's. Yeah, well, this is this is a really interesting dynamic that's been put into play here because we were talking about the Kaminoans pushing back against the Empire. Yes, they're doing that. But at the same time, they're fighting amongst themselves. Right. It's it's interesting because like, uh, and I don't understand this. I I I I, I still have heard, I don't know what kind of genetic material they would need to get from Omega, right? Which we found out what's special about what's special about her is, you know, Tech says I've finished looking at her genetic material and, and she is like a uh, first generation clone from Django Fett, right? Unaltered. Right. Which I guess would make her the closest thing to, you know, pure ge- genetic material than any of them because they're all altered to age faster and, you know, whatever abilities the Bad Batch has. And... So well, they need that that source genetic material to keep making clones, right? So, well, he, I mean, the Empire is clearly already uh, looking to get rid of the clones eventually, right? Through conscription, but uh, is their plan to just continue making clones? I think their plan is to be able to defend themselves from empire occupation with an army of their own, with an army of their own. Wow. Could be interesting. Uh, it it just makes me wonder why it's gotta be Omega though. Why, why Django Fett's genetic material? You know, I mean, I understand he was a good fighter and all, but I mean, you know, I'm sure they could get, more from somebody you know um i mean i think it's just the research is already done yeah okay the process is already there it's streamlined using this genetic material not to get too sci-fi because it's not really what we do in star wars you know (laughs) which just supports your argument right like (laughs) Um, but to add that little sci-fi element to it, that if they went with another, uh, genetic source, they might have to change up their things a little bit. Well, okay. Their process. So we know from this episode that cloning is something they've been doing for a while, right? Cause they had that vat that Omega dropped down on Fennec Shand, which had what appeared to be a Cam and Owen clone in it. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that's how they continue their race on as well, you know? So I I have a feeling, you know, Hmm, that's an interesting point, you know, uh, I mean, and, and, and Dexter knew, you know, Camino, the cloners, you know? Yeah. I mean, they're known for that. (coughs) So, uh, I never thought of that. That's how they continue their race. 
That's my guess after seeing this episode. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. There's still got to be something about Omega, you know, that makes her special. And then her genetic material can be used to create this army, I guess. Right. What am I thinking of here? What, what other, um, franchise do we know of that had a race that was cloning their future? And then that you had natural borns was like new, I'm not sure. Was that Superman? Maybe. Was Kal El a natural born in a <laughs> a cloned society? That's possible. That's that's starting to ring a bell. Hmm. That's interesting that they have that kind that 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 I mean, granted it was just hinted at there. Right. But you picked up on it. I didn't necessarily pick up on that's how they probably continue the race on. <laughs> no, it's my guess because that's a, you know. But wow, that's kind of neat. Uh, oh, what was I, what was I going to say? Sorry to derail you. It's all right. Um, oh, so, so we, we saw this, we saw this happen with, with Grogu, right? They wanted to get something from him right like we're assuming genetic material from grogu and and then they wanted to just off him yeah well lama su said the same thing once we get the genetic genetic material from omega dispose of eliminator eliminator yeah why that's i don't get that like like what exactly <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm guessing it's just him, you know. He's the prime minister, right? Yep. He's in charge. This is him asserting his, you know, authority over Nala Se. It's possible because she got attached to the girl. Look, you know, this caused problems. You know, I'm I'm invoking my prime minister authority here. You get that genetic material, and you eliminate her. Right. Tired of you clouding your judgment for the future, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Totally unnecessary. I guess. Totally I, unnecessary. I guess the, the other th- way to look at that is if they get the genetic material they need from Omega, and, Let then, her go. and then she's eliminated... Then no one else can gather genetic material from her either. But but I don't know who else is cloning though. Right? Yeah, I was gonna say it's just it's like a thing. Everybody's got a backyard cloning device. Like, <laughs> uh, I should get one of those <laughs> for what? <laughs> I don't know. Chickens. Uh, so I don't have to go to work. That's <laughs> uh, just send in the clones. Yes, exactly. Uh, so okay. And the second they start speaking back, you know, talking back, right? Eliminate them. Yep. <laughs> Make another one. Uh. So okay. Um. I don't know. This cloning thing's got me all messed up now. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes rabbit holes are good. Right. Sometimes they derail the conversation. I, I was I was gonna jump back into the bounty hunters, but uh. So Omega, she's she's showing uh, that she has she has the will and ability to put herself into situations to be rescued. Right? She still had to be rescued, but she never would have had the opportunity to be rescued if she didn't put herself in that position to begin right. with. Uh, by tricking. Uh, well, let's Toto. let's let's change that terminology up a little bit. She had to be rescued, but she ended up putting herself in a position to be extracted. Oh well, yeah, okay. Because either way, yeah. I mean, it wasn't a rescue at that point. She had gotten away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Falling in that AirPod, but you know, right? Well, yeah, okay. It was half rescued. Exactly. You know, 
it was she's getting closer and closer to where she's going to be a very effective fighter. Absolutely. Because she was able to get herself out of the bad situation, put herself in another one, but that's that's the growing pains, right? Right. Um but how did she know she wasn't going to have any control over that pot? True. That was it was a good move. Yes. Very good move. <laughs> Now, you know, that, that whole place looked kind of like run down, so God only knows how well those pods are going to work, but, you know. Yeah, you work with what you got. <laughs> right. Same thing the Bad Batch crew would have done. Yes, this is true. So she's fitting right into the crew. <laughs> I always love that. They, they, it, there, there was another moment in this episode where it was like a sense when, like, you know, Hunter said something, like, we got to do whatever it's since when right oh right <laughs> yeah uh, it's funny because really almost every episode right there's something right right that someone's like since when have we done that yeah yeah i think that's just driving the point home that they're they're very unorthodox unorthodox is the best way to put it yes <clears throat> Um, so another casualty in this, this fight between Lama Sue and Nala Se is Tan Wei. Yeah. That was a bit of a shock. Eh? Wasn't it? Cause I, mean, I was like, this is, this is the, you know, the main one we get to see from episode two. And really like the first the first real death moment in this show. There's been a lot of stunning. Yeah, you know, I, I never really thought of it that way. But yeah, I mean, like first, I, I don't know if you call her, call, you know, main character, but, you know, prominent character, right? Uh, someone that we can recall back in episode two and now, and now we know what happened. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, we, th this show has not had a ton of death with the exception of the first episode with, uh, Kanan's master. Right. Um, there's been a real absence of that. Yeah. Which is fine. And, and, you know, I think Star Wars is not no, full of I, unnecessary death. I think what we see in this is a lot of like uh, clone troopers or stormtroopers, you know, that uh, they might be getting hit by blaster fire. But, but that's almost like a, you know. It almost goes unnoticed, we'll say, right? This is this is something that's definitely more prominent. Which I, I got to raise the question, too. You know, we've seen this so far this season um, as far as the clones go. And, and the bat... Uh, you know what? That doesn't pertain to this episode. Okay. But just we've seen a lot of stunning. Yeah. You know, we, we saw it last week with Reunion, you know, fighting against um, Crosshair and his team. All they did was stun his team members. Right. They didn't use live fire, even though live fire is coming at them. They weren't using live fire against them. Yeah, that's interesting. It's just the, the Tonway death just made me think of all that. Like, we haven't seen much death. <laughs> right. Even for the unnamed clones in the fight. Right. There was a lot of stuns. So huh. that, that just made, makes Tonway's death even more like, whoa. Yeah, exactly. And it was... It was very jarring because they just come around the corner and there she is laying there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you find out, oh, it was Fennec Shand, which, you know, we we learned in The Mandalorian, it's not 
someone you cross. You don't come out alive. Exactly. Except in the Bad Batch, she kind of seems more like the good bounty hunter, right? She's the one looking out for Omega more than Cad Bane. Yeah. Um, you know it's all for the money, but I mean it's... it's I was just going to say, I think that's because it's the job. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't really take her as a bounty hunter that would off a kid. Right. But yeah, they definitely made her out to be the, the good bounty hunter of the fight here. Even though I'm not going to lie, I was kind of rooting for Cad Bane because it just <laughs> seems kind of like the home team, right? Like, Yeah. Well, okay. There's only one of those two that we, uh, we've we seen in the future here, you know? It's true. Yeah. It's true. I think we're going to see. <laughs> I don't want to make bold predictions, but we may see his end. It's possible. Because yeah. there were some definite moments where she was kicking the crap out of him. And that's that's the thing. He acknowledges, you know, uh, or, or lays it out there for us. You know, basically she's a rookie, you know, and she held her own. I would, I would call that, <laughs> I would call it a draw. Mainly, mainly because, you know, not mainly, the whole fight was a draw. It would have still been going on had had she not had the forethought to disable his ship, and then, you know, eh, she might be in trouble if he was able to pursue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this may be the first moment that you see Cad Bane doing something not for the money. Right. I said Cad Bane, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like like he's got a. He's got to get back at her now because she made him look foolish. Oh, she did. His mark got away without his credits. Really, his droid screwed it all up. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> Speaking of, Seth Green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. But yeah, I mean, he screwed it all up by grabbing the credits. Yeah. They may have actually been able to make that exchange. Yeah, exactly. Even though it looked like they were going to start shooting. Now, not only did he screw it up there, he screwed it up by letting Omega out to fix his leg. I mean, he needs to keep that droid powered off until he needs him. That's <laughs> well, her argument was convincing. Oh, sure. Like, where am I going to go? At that time, it was a good point. Yeah. And then they landed. <laughs> it was great timing. It was. It worked out for Omega, for sure. Yeah. I, it's great episode, though. Like, all in all, a lot of fun. Yes. Great action. Seeing two top-notch bounty hunters go at it was fantastic. I almost feel like we got a little bit of a little bit of foreshadowing. Yeah, because we have Omega, right? They also mentioned, oh, the Alpha, the Alpha, yeah, Boba. Yes. Yep. So, if we see Boba in this, do we figure this is how he's familiar with Fennec in The Mandalorian? It's possible. It's possible, yeah. So then, are we going to hold out- up a Boba Fett- Cad Bane collision course. That's that's what I was just going to say. So then are we going to hold out hope that Cad Bane shows up in the book of Boba Fett? No. Okay. No. I have a feeling that this whole helmet dent thing. Ah, uh, yet to come. Maybe yet to come. Yeah. It could be that way. 
And that's where Cad Bane bites it. Yep. Yeah, could see that. I can see that, and that makes total sense. We did see that animatic from uh, uh, whatever celebration they played that at, and right, and uh, you know, you know, Star Wars, Star Wars stuff never gets thrown away. So it uh, well, and it would be perfect right now because they've been they've been touting the Mandalorian armor, right? Right. Why it's so great? They did it in. <laughs> um, Rebels. Yep. Did it in the Clone Wars. Did it in the Mandalorian. Yep. So, why would the Bad Badge be any different? But the thing, I mean, the thing about that is you would think Cad Bane would know that. You would think. Yeah. But he's a little arrogant at the same time. It's true. Because, I mean, he even told Fennec. You know, it's not wise to go up against me. Right. You're you're too inexperienced to go up against me. Right. And there were moments there she was whooping your ass, bro. Exactly. That's the thing. I mean, she threw him over the balcony. If he didn't have like the, you know. Jet boots. Jet boots. Which Just rocketeer jet boots. Everybody wants jet boots, right? Yeah. Uh, if he didn't have those, he'd be done for, so. This this has yep. got to be this this whole fight, this whole episode's got to be a blow to Cad Bane's ego. He lost the money, he lost the quarry, he lost the fight basically. So, yeah, I mean, he got tricked by that explosive that knocked him out, right? Like, yeah, she could have finished him off. It's true, but I mean, at the same time, if he was really concerned with finishing her off, there was a moment, too, where he could have. You know, when he booted her in the face, he had a moment there. <laughs> right. He could have just ended it. Yeah. But that's not what he was concerned with. Yeah, Great back and forth fight. Definitely. Great episode. Good, good character building episode for Omega, too. She's definitely, uh, she's definitely coming into her own. You know, Developing her own abilities. Yep. And what would be... She's developing what would be important to the team later on. You know, she's kind of got a little bit of every one of the Bad Batch's skills. Right. You know, while they're all specific to their task, she's got a little bit of each. It's true. Kind of wondering what they might do with this character after all of this. Well... I don't know. What I do know. This is a character I, I would be wondering if we might see in the book of Boba Fett. It's possible. Because uh, clearly now, we know for sure, like like one to one scale here, right? First generation, first generation. Uh, this is essentially Boba Fett's sister. Yeah. So, uh I think that's a good possibility that we can see her. Um, yeah. And you know, what I was going to say is for as much as uh, at the end, Hunter's promising never have to go back to Camino again. <laughs> I got a feeling that you're going to end up back on Camino. So this yeah. ain't over. But it'll be different, right? They're going there because they have to. Of course. Not because not because she's captive. <laughs> she's not going back there to be put in a tube and tested on and things like that. Right. She's going back there to whoop some ass. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> well, all right. A lot of good stuff there. And if you have anything to add to the conversation... You can always email us, show at the wars and com. That's really the best way to get a hold of us. But we're also on social media. We're at the wars and more on Twitter, facebook.com slash the wars and more. You can find all that and all the ways you can find the show over at the wars and com. Any final thoughts this week, Doug? No, I think that about covers it. All right. We will talk next week. <laughs>